So what we're really trying to do with this, uh, with this conference was to address this issue of the Anthropocene. And uh, I mean, academics technically co constantly talk about the Anthropocene, but I don't think it is a well-known term outside of academia. We are suggesting that the implications of the Anthropocene and the implications of what is happening to our planet are so severe, so extreme, that, that we must deal with it in every part of our life. And so it transforms what the mission of the humanities can be. So the first day of the conference we called Perspectives. So what we got is a series of disciplines or sub-disciplines of the humanities demonstrating how the Anthropocene had transformed their practice and their ideas. Uh, we have probably created another oh, few thousand. Nobody is counting. The materials chemists maybe know. Uh, the geologists don't yet. But it, it is a significant geological departure. And what Libby did at, on that day is talk about how the very concept of environment, the environment, has changed. The invention of the environment was just one of the social experiments whereby science was deemed to be useful to society, but when the advice came, it was ignored if it was unpalatable. Sverko is talking about the way in which the humanities, as a series of disciplines, as a series of methods and practices, has been transformed and is being transformed by this idea of the Anthropocene. Uh, perhaps it provides a whole new scale on which to study culture and society. So it opens up a lot, a range of new opportunities for humanists and social scientists to contribute uh, to this fantastic work done by the geoscientists uh, and their community. Day two of the conference takes up what we believe in SEI to be one of the most important and original dimensions of environmentalism that has emerged out of Australia. And that is the ancient Aboriginal ethic of caring for country. Because caring for country is a conversation we need to be having. It's a conversation for the Anthropocene. It's desperately urgent. And around specific knowledge tied to country, we definitely need to know those structures. It's not just a case of respect, although it is very much about respect. It's also a case of right protocols and the way of working in country. In some senses, day three is obvious. We are, we are looking at individual uh, human relationships to plants, animals, uh, material cultures of various different kinds. But what is really, I think, distinctive about the way we're doing this is we, are, we have chosen people who are passionately linked to nature, talking about birdsong. Every day we can experience a drastically condensed version in this way of the earth evolving from silence into song. Talking about whales. Lowered a hydrophone into the water and recorded the song of a humpback whale. Suddenly these animals which had been dumb had a voice. And not only a voice, an intensely beautiful abstract voice something which even now is beyond our comprehension. To demonstrate, I think, one of the most powerful things that the humanities can offer, and that is feeling, emotion, passion. That is what we can provide that science can't provide. That the humanities, a somewhat neglected and marginal side of environmentalism up until recently, is front and center part of the mission we have to try and, quite simple, save the world.